Yo. Today is a simple day. Today we're talking about nothing less than exporting your tracks. This is for beginners. We're going to dive deep into the things that I have been learning in audio engineering school. We were doing a lot of different things like learning sample rate, bit depth, digital audio, analog audio. We also go over things like aliasing and different kinds of issues that may happen when exporting your tracks. We'll also go over like MP3, Wave, and different things that you guys need to know when trying to send your song to distribution, otherwise Spotify, Apple Music, things like that. So what do I mean? Let's go ahead and check out one of my songs and see what we got going on. First thing I want you to look at is the export settings. These are the main things we're looking at here. We're going to get into these and make sure that you guys are set up right. Main things you got to understand is we're doing digital audio here. This is not analog. We're not in the recording studio with analog gear. We're doing digital. So we have to pay attention to things like sample rate and bit depth. Let's go ahead and check out this song first and then we'll show how to export. Okay, so let's say you got a heater ready to go. You want to take that thing to Spotify, but you need to know how to export it. So first off, make sure you have the whole thing selected or you can hit command shift R. This will send us here. Now you're going to see render start length, render uh, length. This is the amount of time that you're going to be exporting. All of these you can leave off. And the only thing we need to pay attention to is the sample rate. Sample rate is going to be important. Let's go ahead and check this out here. You can see a visual of the sample rate. Now with sample rate, we have to pay attention to this only because we're using computers. If we were using analog equipment, we don't have to worry about that. That's why that analog equipment is so expensive that you see. But with this, it's a little bit different. You know, we have this audio being converted into a digital signal. And when it's converted, we use samples. And the sample rate is basically how many samples are being used. So you'll see 44,000, 48,000, 96,000, and so on. In recording music, we're going to be using 44.1 most of the time. 48 would be used for more like movies. There's more dynamic range in this. Um, personally, I am exporting at 48,000. You could do either 44.1 or 48. I'm doing 48. So PCM is important. This stands for Pulse Code Modulation. This is what Ableton is doing to create a lossless audio file. So it's converting the signal. This is what this little section's for. So we're gonna have this turned on. The file type will be WAV. We want to have a WAV file. This is the highest quality file. And then we're also gonna have MP3 on. So when we export it, we'll have our WAV file. This is what we'll use to upload to SoundCloud and Spotify and Apple. And then we'll have MP3. And this is what we'll use to play out at the shows or share with our DJ friends. We can share this file around. The reason we have two is because the WAV file is very big in file size. So that may be like 20 megabytes, 30 megabytes, while your MP3 is like two to seven megabytes. It's very small, much easier to store and share with people. Plus the MP3 will have the same audio quality with the technology we have nowadays. The quality of your MP3 will stay high and very nice. So make sure your MP3 is your main one you're going to be using. And then when you're uploading to DistroKid or CD Baby for distribution, they'll send to Spotify and SoundCloud and they'll use your WAV file to upload that. So make sure you have that as well. Bit depth is the next thing here. So you have sample rate, which includes how many samples are being used in our digital signal. And then we have bit depth, which is how many bits are being used within the sample rate. So see this picture here? This picture is basically showing us what the bit depth would look like. So at a small bit depth, it's not as high quality, not as much clarity. So bit depth 16, you're getting these big blocks. The higher bit depth we go, the better signal we get, the cleaner our wave is. And you see there's more squares here. We have a smoother signal rather than this blocky signal. So once again, bit depth is the resolution. You want to keep this as high as possible. And these will be your main export settings. 
Now that you know how to export your track, you'll hit that export button, send it to wherever you want to save it. I save it to my records here, and then you'll have an MP3 and a WAV version such as this. One thing you do want to take into consideration though is that when we're making this music that's very distorted and very loud, something can happen, which is a problem called aliasing. It's important we go over this because aliasing is digital distortion that occurs when there's frequencies that are higher than half of the sample rate. So if there was frequencies higher than our sample rate, higher than half of our sample rate, then these frequencies can bounce back and fold into the audible range. The audible range for our ears is only about like 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. And when we're exporting our track, we're doing twice that, which is 48,000. So normal human range, 20,000 hertz, we export this. But if there's frequencies that are going even higher, they'll bounce back and start to play in the audible range, which is called aliasing. We don't want aliasing to happen. We want to prevent this. So what we do is a trick called oversampling. So on your master, you'll have a plugin like Proel or a clipper that has an oversampling feature. And you can turn this on before you export your song. If you actually want to turn this on, this uses a lot of processing power. So usually you're going to produce with it off. And then as soon as you export it, turn it on, we will prevent aliasing by having the oversampling really high. And then you can go ahead and export that with the oversampling turned on. And that'll be like the final things that you need to worry about. This is, you know, basic audio engineering. We want to make sure that your tracks are prepped and ready for distribution. Also, they want to be sounding professional. We want to make sure that when we send them, everything sounds clean. If you guys have questions, put them in the comments. Let me know what's good. I will help you with what you need. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and go to dripmit.com for sample packs and you can book your lessons there. Have a good day, guys. Peace out. Bye. The Iron Man will break you.